we uh, we had a great time uh, worshiping with you guys, being sort of back to normal somewhat. We have some plans to relaunch Kids Building, Kids Church, so we'll give you those updates as soon as we get those. First of all, I just wanted you guys to help me welcome in a couple of groups. There's a group in the Growth Track Room, the Hub, and the Kids Building right now. Well, let's welcome them in. Come on. Welcome to the house. And uh, so I need y'all to amen really loud so I can hear y'all all the way in here. Uh, and so I need you guys to out amen these people because uh, they're going to be loud. All right, so I want you guys to help us out with that. Um, as I was preparing for this message, I was thinking about a lot of what David shared last week. Uh, David, is he in the house? He might have went to the hub. He's in the hub. All right, thanks. Hey, let's give it up for David for sharing a powerful message last week. <laughs> Wake up, sleepy head. It was uh, really good. If you missed it, uh, you can go on YouTube, our, our YouTube channel, and check that out. We, uh, we, I'm so glad that he shared that word because it was powerful to me, and it made me start thinking about some things. And so I want to start this series, The Lies That Bind, because... There are some lies that we believe that the devil holds us to, and it really keeps us from being the people God calls us to be and the leaders God calls us to be. And I'm going to give you the first one this morning. Here's what we're going to talk about this morning. Here's the lie the devil gives us. This must be God's will for me. You're going through some struggles. You're going through some pains. And, and, and yes, you can learn from them. And yes, there might be some things that God wants to use, but it doesn't necessarily have to be God's will for your life. See, some things happen in our life, and we just go, you know what? This is just God's will for me. It's Murphy's Law, right? We, we see God as Murphy. He's just, okay, God, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it, and ain't nothing I can do about it. No, there's sometimes there's a demonic force and a demonic presence in your life, and that's why it's happening to you. And so we need to learn the difference. So today I'm going to give you three things uh, that you can take, and hopefully you can, you can walk this out and, and help you walk in and learn God's will and walk in it because that's what God's calling us to do, especially in this day and age that we're in. Listen, we're in a crazy time right now. Somebody said this is level six Jumanji. Um, with all the craziness and the tropical storm is hitting the shore pretty soon. Some of us are already hitting. Thank goodness it's just east of us. We want to pray for, the, for those people as well. But, but listen, it's just been crazy. And, and so to look, to look around and see all the chaos that's going on around us, we've got to be wondering, God, what is going on? Can I just say, sometimes God's using us to, to bring it to the next level, but sometimes it's the demonic forces around us that's causing the issues in our life. Uh, there can be some things that's, that's being held back from you because the devil does not want you to have what God wants you to have. I'm going to just tell you right now, uh, I was driving by baseball fields yesterday, and I just saw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people sitting on top of each other, and I just thought, man, I'm glad I'm not out there. That's the first thing I thought because uh, we did the baseball thing, and I'm glad that that part's over because it's hot. If you got if you got baseball family, it's hot out there. Can I get an amen on how hot it is for the baseball families? It's hot. It's hot in here. And so as I was as I was driving by, I just thought, you know, that's awesome, and they're cheering on their family, and, and it's it's an awesome thing. But when a group of people get together, there's not always power. But when you get together in the house of God, there's power. Now I'm not. They ain't nothing with this building. I'm talking about the reason we're gathering. Uh, and so I want you to know that the, the devil does not like this. He doesn't want this. God's got some stuff for you, and the devil's trying to keep it from you. It happened to Daniel. Daniel was praying. I'm going to give you this scripture real quick. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel gets a vision from God, and he's trying to get some clarity on it. And he starts praying and seeking God. And here's what the angel finally shows up three weeks later. You ever pray for something for three weeks? He fasted and prayed for three weeks. He didn't eat meat. That's a serious prayer time right there. You know bacon is meat, right? We all understand that he didn't eat bacon for three weeks. Uh, he didn't drink wine. He didn't even put lotions on. I mean, I don't know what kind of lotion they had back there, if they had Young Living or what they had, but he didn't use it. He was like, I don't, I don't want to have anything interfere with me connecting with God. So he was praying, praying, praying for three weeks. The angel finally shows up and starts telling him this. He tells him, hey, I showed up. Here, here I am. I'm going to give you a word. And he continued, don't be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding. He set his mind to gain understanding, and nothing was going to thwart that. Nothing was going to push him off. Nothing was going to push him to the side to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God. Now, let me just, I don't have time to get into this deep this morning, but if you'll do these two things, if you'll set your mind to gain understanding and you'll humble yourself before God, some awesome stuff's going to happen. Set your mind to gain understanding. Like, you don't know it all. I, I just, that's a revelation for some of you today. You don't know it all. And the people that do think they know it all... <clears throat> They're very irritating to those of us who actually do. Huh? <clears throat> you, you don't know it all. Gain some understanding. I mean, can I just tell you in the world right now, we need some understanding. We're in a world right now where there's very little understanding. We need some understanding. We need, we need to, to step back and, and quit trying to make a point. 
and just have some understanding. Gain understanding. Humble yourself before God. Your words were heard, he tells him, and I have come in response to them. I came in response to your word. Look at verse 13. But the prince of Persia, the Persian kingdom, resisted me for 21 days. In other words, he said the answer could have been day one. You prayed, and I was on my way, and there was a demonic force stopped me from getting to you with the answer. Don't stop. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Then Michael, one of the uh, chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there in the king, uh, with the king of Persia. So listen, he, the demonic force, he was saying, there's another realm going on when you're praying, and sometimes you ain't getting the answer. Sometimes it's because of the way you're living, but sometimes it's because the demonic force doesn't want you to have it. And you can't give up on it. So I want you to know that the, word, the will of God is, is going to come, but it's not going to come automatically. Like, You've got to work on it. So here's the first thing you have to do. If you're going to live the life God calls you to live, here's number one. It's very simple. I want to give you this. Just find the will of God. You've got to find out what it is. So many people, so many Christians today are living life, and they have no clue what God's will is for their life. No clue. And they're miserable. You know, you know people say, well, people in the world are miserable. No, they're having a good time. Sin is fun for a season. You know, the most miserable people in the world are the ones who are Christ followers that don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And I'm just going to give you one of those real quick. There's a few things that God wants you to do, uh, but you've got to be teachable, right? You've got you to have a teachable spirit. You've got to set your mind to gain understanding. You don't know it all. You, you, it, there's a chance that you're not dead center in the middle of God's will right now. Maybe you are, but just think that there's a chance that maybe you're not. Maybe that's why you're miserable. But God's got a will for you, and I'm going to give you real quick the two things the two, he's got two wills for you, and they don't contradict each other. Let me, let me show you. Here's, a, here's what I want you to see. He has a general will for you, and he has a specific will for you. So his general will is basics. It's love God, love people. It's put other people before you. It's humble yourself. It's serve one another. <clears throat> it's reading his word. It's not neglecting the assembly of yourselves on Sunday mornings in life group. There's, some, there's a basic will for God's got a general will for you. But here's what I want you to know. We're all looking for this, and we're not doing that. We, we want a specific will. We want God, God, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? This job or that job? This relationship or that relationship? What am I supposed to do with my finances? We're not doing this. You ain't going to get this. And I'm going to tell you personal experience. If you've been here any time at all, you've heard my story. If you've been through Growth Track, you've heard my story. I'm going to challenge you. If you haven't, go through Growth Track. Uh, we didn't say this in the, in the news, uh, but we got a connect card. Fill it out. Let us know that you're here. We're not going to call you or come by your house. We're going to send you an email. But we want you to help you take that next step because, listen, in, the, in your next step, you'll learn how to find God's specific will because part of God's general will is for you to serve other people. And our process here at WRC is worship, connect. Worship, connect, serve. That's our process. And let me just say, if you're not serving other people, you're not in the middle of God's will. And I don't mean you have to, like, have a butler suit on and go around, you know, calling people madam and lady. I mean, or, or lady and sir, or gentleman or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just being a, having an attitude of, of servant. Man, if you see somebody needs something, give, give it to them. Just ask people they need the water. Just, just, just be, be available. Just be ready to serve. And if you've been through growth track, that's what we do. We, we, we try to take you, from, we, we take you from where you are to where God wants you to be through growth track. But my story is... God kept saying, hey, look, you got this situation from a few years ago you need to forgive. You know what I'd say? Wasn't my fault. You need to forgive. He was older than me. You need to forgive. He was a leader. You need to forgive. Well, I didn't really do that much wrong. You need to forgive. All my friends praised me for what I did. See, I had an excuse every single time, and that would create a false peace in my life. And then a, a, a year or two would go by. I'm sad to say this. A year or two would go by, and I'd say, okay, God, I'm ready to go to the next level. What do you want me to do? And he'd say, you need to forgive. That's general will. You need to forgive. It's general. This is basics, y'all. I'm giving y'all basics right here. You, you got to forgive. If you don't for, live in forgiveness, you won't get this. I'm just telling you right now. Because I walked in unforgiveness for a decade. I was bitter, angry. It didn't come out. I didn't talk about it. I didn't show it. But deep inside, I knew God was trying to get me to forgive before he would give me this. I finally picked up the phone. I, I forgave the guy 10 years later. And within about 18 months, God called me into ministry. I'm just telling you, he won't give you the specific will until you do his general will. And, and, and sometimes we don't hear God's voice. Sometimes we don't, we don't know exactly what he wants us to do, right? We, don't, we, we, we hear something, but we're not really sure what it is. And I want to give you an audio feed this morning. It's just about four seconds long. And I want you to, we're going to listen to one version 
And then we're going to clear it up a little bit. But I want you to hear this, and I want you to listen. Some of y'all, y'all hearing God speak, and this is kind of what it sounds like when you hear him. And you're not really sure the clarity. But here's what the Bible says. Jesus says, my sheep will know my voice. They know my voice. So when I speak, they know that it's me. Sometimes God's speaking to you. You don't know his voice because you ain't heard him speak. And maybe it sounds a little something like this. Listen to this. Does anybody know what that said? Sometimes that's what the Word of God sounds like to you. God's speaking to you, and you hear it jumbled. You're like, God, I know you're trying to tell me something. It's like, it reminds me of Nemo. Remember, we're in the eastern Australian current, the EAC. Remember, they're, they're on the EAC, and they're cruising, and the little turtle keeps talking to Nemo. And, and, and so he's, like, telling him what to do and where to go and how to do it. And, and Nemo goes, I know he's trying to tell me something. I just know it. He was talking so fast, you couldn't hardly hear him. And sometimes we think that's the way God speaks. And we hear that. We hear it jumbled up. But here's what really was being said. Listen to this. This is the clear version. If this doesn't work, it'll be really embarrassing. Okay. That's what he actually said. It was distorted. See, and when you don't get this right, you hear a distorted word from God. See, when you're angry, you don't want God to bless other people. You want your blessing first. That's not biblical. So, so, so now that you've heard what he actually said, if this doesn't work, it'll be embarrassing. Let's listen to the jumbled version one more time. Did you hear it that it's time? It's pretty hard to understand, oh, right? There go. But what Did if you hear we heard that time? the clean version of that sound? Why? Because you heard what it sounded like. You knew what it sounded like. See, when you start getting this right, you'll start hearing this. Are y'all getting this this morning? I'm preaching about I hope the, I hope the hub is going wild right now because I'm preaching... <laughs> Hubs, they just went crazy. I just heard them. You're not going to, so many people, listen, and, and they call, and, and, and sometimes it's me, sometimes it's your life group leader, sometimes it's just somebody in your family that has some religious background. I don't know what God wants me to do. But are you reading his word? Are you praying? Are you forgiving? Are you giving? Are you serving? Because you get this right, this is coming. I'm just here to tell you. Are y'all getting this this morning? Okay. You got to get the word of God, but you got to do his general will before you get his specific will. And for right now, the world is so crazy and upside down, we're too busy trying to be right. Hmm. I'm going to move on because I think I went too deep right there. <laughs> Here's what the Bible says about him speaking his will to us. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. A lot of people stop right there and say, see, you can't know what God wants to do. I'm going to give you two words that will change your world. Keep reading. <laughs> Keep reading. Listen, this, the Bible was not written in scriptures and verses. It was just written. They broke it down so we could find stuff. So this was just one part. You've got to keep reading. Here's what the next part says. But, beautiful but right there. But, so no, no mind can conceive it. No, because you can't fathom what God wants to do. You can't receive it in your mind. You've got to receive it in your spirit. Here's why. It was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. So if you want to know what God wants for you in your life, you've got you to hear him speak. You've got to put some stuff down. Turn some stuff off. Get off of social media for a minute. Turn your phone off. Turn your computer off. Turn your iPad off. Turn your TV off. Hey, disconnect Netflix for a few days. Sorry, I went way too far on that one. My bad. We receive these things by the Spirit, for His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. Some of y'all walking around like, I don't even know. I, it just feels like a jumbled up mess. Get to His specific will. Read His word. Pray. Seek His face. Forgive. Serve others. I mean, there's some. read the New Testament. They'll, they'll just find thing after thing after thing that you could be doing that's in His general will for you. Then you'll start getting a specific will because He does it through His Spirit. The next verse says, no one can know a person's thoughts except the person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. Now watch this, verse 12. And we have received God's spirit. So you have it. So his spirit knows all things and you can have it. Not the world spirit. So we can know, we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Now God has a plan for your life. I know that sounds crazy, but God has a plan for your life. And can I just tell you, it didn't happen after he realized what your birthday was going to be. He didn't look at me and go, okay, May 11th, 1977. I just turned 43, by the way, so I'm still a young rooster, young hen, young chicken. Spring chicken. That's what I am, a spring chicken. I knew it was some sort of bird, but um, 
He didn't go, you know what, there's a birthday, so let me just see 10 years, carry the one. Okay, I got something for him. No, he knew before you ever conceived what you were supposed to do, which is why well, abortion is murder, by the way. But let me just say this, God can forgive and God can heal and all those things. And if that's been a part of your life, God can, you can give it to him and he will make you whole again, praise God, because he's a God of forgiveness, he's a God of redemption. Let me just tell you right now that God is a God that wants to set you on a path that he's called for you to go down. So he's free to give us all things. God has a path for your life. Here's what we, here we find this in Psalms 139. I love this verse. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. God wrote down what you were going to be doing in his book. I want you to think about that. This is, this is deep stuff. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. God laid out your whole life. He's got a will specifically for you, but it ain't going to automatically happen. You've got to choose to do it. Uh, we're going to jump to the next verse. It says this, how precious are your thoughts about me? The psalmist says, look, you're thinking thoughts about me, God. You, you thought about me before I was ever born, and you're thinking thoughts about me? How precious are your thoughts about me? That word means appraisal. It, mean, it means of value. you got valuable thoughts towards me. Now, here's the problem. Here's where the devil comes in. This must not be God's will for you because God's thinking bad thoughts about you. God can't wait for you to slip up so he can knock you upside the head by getting you fired. God can't wait for you to slip up so he can start messing up your relationship. That's, that's the devil talking. God's got, he's been waiting patiently for you to come back home. I'm telling you right now, if you're not doing his general will, he will sit and wait patiently for you to do his general will so he can give you his specific will. God's waiting patiently. He's got precious thoughts about me, oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. That's the many thoughts God has towards you. I want you to just, I know you can't, but I want you to try to think about that just for a second. And if you can't, maybe the hub. Let's, let's see if the hub can just, can you just for a second think about God has so many thoughts towards you, you can't even number them. They're more than the sand. If you ever been to the beach, that's a lot. I mean, just been to one beach. Like, I don't know, Lake Charles Beach. Of course, that ain't really sand. I don't really know what that is. I guess he could have used mud in the marsh or something, but he used grains of sand. More than the grain. And he's talking about the world. God's got a lot of good thoughts towards you. When I wake up, you're still with me. See, a lot of times I go to bed happy and wake up wondering sometimes where God's at. And I've told you this before, but it, it, the devil comes at me on Saturday nights and Sunday mornings. There's a storm in the Gulf. Ain't nobody coming. But you, you ain't got no word to share. Ain't nobody coming. I'm just telling you, the devil will beat you up. And I love this. When, you, when I wake up, he's still there. He's still faithful. Before I ever get out of bed, he's still faithful. I ain't even put my foot on the floor, and he's still there with me. Because he'll never leave you. There's another in the fire. I love that song because it says, there, will, there was, there is, and there will be. Go back and listen to that song. Every one of those verses, this past, present, and future. We're going to skip a couple of verses. I love this verse right here. This is a prayer you need to pray if you want to get God's will in your life. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. So he's got good thoughts towards you, and you got anxious thoughts. I'd like to trade some of those, wouldn't you? Can you what if you just trade some thoughts with what God has for us? Well, you can, and here's the prayer you need to pray. The next verse, here's the prayer. Point out anything in me that offends you. Huh. Be careful when you pray this prayer. <laughs> and you better have a notebook open or something with a lot of ink in your pen. No, I'm picking. That's, you know what God does? He gives you the little things. He gives you the stuff that you thought you forgot about. He's like, hey, take care of this. You got this relationship messed up over here? Go take care of that. You had not been serving other people. It's time for you to step up, get on a dream team, and start serving some people. So he'll give you some specific. He ain't going to beat you down and beat you up. He's going to gently lead you. Listen, point out anything that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. This is how you find God's will in your life. So you need to find God's will. Here's number two I want to give you real quick. You need to pray the will of God. Find out what it is. And then pray it. That's what Daniel did. Daniel's like, God, I know you got more for me. And for 21 days, he fasted, prayed. He didn't eat a piece of bacon. He didn't put lotion on. didn't drink wine. For 21 days, he prayed. And the angel finally showed up. You need to pray the will of God. And I'm just going to give you some revelation. Uh, we teach this in the little yellow book. And we teach it when we do prayer seminars or dad does them. Uh, God's will does not automatically happen. I know that might be stepping on some of your theology right now. But God's will does not automatically happen. We just saw it in Daniel. It doesn't automatically happen. You can't just wake up and go, you know what, God? You got those plans? Yeah, just go ahead and it's like putting in a cartridge to a video game. Yeah, go ahead. Let's just, let's just load this file today and you just do. No, you got a free will. You know you can't have love without free will. I want you to think about that for a second. I'm, I know. I, I'm telling you, I got six weeks of stuff. It's just coming, man. It's just coming. You can't have love without free will. 
I don't know about you, but I loved it when my kids finally on their own said, Daddy, I love you. Actually, I liked, yes, sir, first, and then I love you because I took forever. You meet people from up north and like, yeah and no. Okay, that's another, that's a whole other message about respect. And I'm going to prove it to you just real quick, a simple scripture. Almost everybody in this room knows the Lord's Prayer. Here's what it says in Matthew chapter 6. Then this is how you pray. This is Jesus teaching us how to pray. He says this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You know it. You know the Lord's Prayer. He's telling us to pray down the will of God. It does not and cannot and will not automatically happen. God's sovereign. Yes, he is. And in his sovereignty, he chose to use us. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I wouldn't have done it that way. I know people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know people. I would not have done it that way. I know me. Wait, you want me to do something without getting sideways with 18 people? I wouldn't have done, This is how he chose to do it. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, what's God's will in heaven? Healing. Power, authority, peace. Everybody getting along with everybody. This is God. You got to pray it down. It does not and will not automatically happen. You got to pray down the will of God. But you got to know what it is first. And you can get in his general will, find the word of God, find his general will, start doing that, and you'll start getting the specific will of God. I'm telling you, he'll do that for you. He'll do that for you. He'll do that for you. When you start praying, some things will start happening. First John 5 tells us this. This is the confidence that we have approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his, according to his what? Come on, Hub, help me out. According to his what? According to his will, he hears us. Anything? Any little, bitty, smallest thing, if it's in his will. If you ask anything in his will, we know that he hears us and we know that we have what we ask for, this is the power of prayer. This is what he says. And then we know that he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we will uh, have what he, we have asked of him. I want you to get this this morning. This is so, so, so crucial. We know we're going to have it. But you've got to ask believing in prayer when you know it's his will. How do you know what's in God's will? Get in his word. His word will never contradict his, his written word will never contradict his spoken word. And, and, and I have people, man, I've, I had a person call me not too long ago and a uh, really, really, really good friend of mine, and, and he was wanting to make some decisions that completely against the Word of God. And he said, I feel like God's leading me in this direction. I said, no, he ain't. How do I know? Is it, it doesn't line, line up with the Word. See, what we do is we think what we want to do, and then we try to find a scripture that matches it, and we take it out of context. Man, text without context is very dangerous. Very dangerous. And listen, I want you guys to check me. Like, this ain't... Like, the, I'm actually using versions of Scripture here. Like, if, if I've had people come and say, I don't know. Hey, I'm, you need to check it. You need to test it. Don't just swallow it hook, line, and sink it. We do that every day, don't we? Just just swallow it. Don't swallow just, just I'm, t- I'm here to tell you God will never tell you something that contradicts what's in his word. I'm here to tell you right now. You can have the word of God. You can have the will of God. You can know the will of God, and you can pray it down and pray it with authority. And here's number three I want to give you. And this is going to be the hardest part for some of us, and that's walking it. Man, walking in the will of God. I want you to think about that. Just every day, walking in his will, loving people, loving God, serving people, being gracious, having joy. Some of y'all struggling with joy right now. And I'm not talking about the person you work with either, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Just, Just don't have any joy. Well, that ain't biblical. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Listen, we're walking around without the fruits of the Spirit and wondering why the world don't want what we got. I don't want what you got either. But, man, I need to catch on to what God's Word says. And I'm just here to tell you, there's going to be a lot of people in your life, and they've already passed by you, and some of you have worked with in the past, and some of you are working with now, and you're going to work with and go to school with. You may be the only Jesus they ever see. You may be only the only will of God they ever see. Make a difference. Man, we're in a world right now, it's a struggle. Man, it's a struggle, and, and here, here's, here's what we're trying to do. And, and I'm just I'm talking to the Big C Church. I'm, this includes you, includes the hub, the kids building, and the growth track room, all of you guys. I want you to hear this. Quit trying to make a point. 
okay, I'm going to do this. No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> don't raise your hands, all right, because you'll be lying if you do. Nobody in this room that's listening to this video right now, nobody, <laughs> this is strong right here. I'm going to tell you, it's coming strong. Nobody has ever convinced anybody to change their mind on social media. Now, maybe somebody, like, drifted for a minute and came back. Quit trying to make a point. Glory. <laughs> Glory? Okay. I don't know if that was supposed to, like, confirm it or... or Am I supposed to be scared right now? What part of the glory cloud? I don't know what that was. Anyway, listen, we're just trying to get our point across. Just I need, I need my, I need to make my point on social media. No, you don't. They just need to see what I see. They can't because I ain't walking in your shoes. I need to make a point. Some of us are just struggling. We're just like, I don't know what to do. And I'll just be honest with you. There's been moments in this season where I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Or, or who cares? Like, just, just I don't know. Man, trying to, trying to make a point. Just shrugging it off. Trying to be right. I just want to challenge you with this. Quit trying to make a point and start making a difference. Quit giving shrugs and start giving some hugs. Quit trying to be right and start shedding some light. Are y'all, get, are y'all, are y'all with me this morning? You mean to say that again, Claire? Okay, we're trying to make a point, start making a difference. Got that one? Okay, uh, quit shrugging and start hugging. Got that one? All right. We're trying to be right, start shedding some light. So, you know what the world needs to be in the middle of all this chaos? Handing out waters to both sides. Man, Jesus loves you. We want to jump on the side. We want to jump in the, f- listen, I'm not saying that there's not a side that you need to be on. All I'm saying is, let's, let's quit trying to make a point, start making a difference. They don't need to see how right you are. They need to see that you love. They need to see how bright you are, not how right you are. That's good. That's, that's tweetable right there. They need to see how bright you are, not how right you are. We're in a world right now. The, the world is hurting, y'all. I'm, level 7 of Jumanji might be coming next. I don't know. But you know who does? Jesus. And it don't matter. Because if we be the world, if, I mean, if we be the, the church to the world, What's going on right now makes people realize just how much they need love in their life. And there ain't no love like agape love. And the only people who have agape love are, are, are the church. It's agape love. It's the only, only you can have it is in the church. I want you to see this morning. You need to walk in the word of God, in the will of God. Here's what he says about the will of God, walking in it. Now, may the God of peace. Here's how you know if you're in God's will right here, that word right there. Now, I call it chaotic peace. All right, that's what I, that's a, just a, Thomason Frey, I don't know, Thomas, Thomas Side Frey, my last name's Tom, I don't know, it's a phrase that I made up, chaotic peace, here's what I mean, here's what I mean, it look, may look like chaos around you, right, the job is looking crazy, the relationships are a little bit rocky, the finances are struggling right now, but some deep inside, you got a peace that nobody can explain, not even you, that's chaotic peace, there's chaos all around you, but you got peace on the inside, the God of peace, so if he's in it, there's going to be peace, who through the blood of eternal covenant, by the way, let me just stop right here. If you don't have a piece about sharing that thing that you're sharing on social media, then don't. Just, I just stopped a whole lot of fights right there. Y'all can give me credit later, all right? Just tag me on you on Facebook and let me know. I ain't on Facebook, but just tag me anyway. I ain't going to tell me about it. The God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant, well, listen, we're talking about eternity here, eternal covenant, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Look at verse 21. He equips us with everything for doing his will. Everything good for doing his will, that he may work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Listen, God wants you to know his will. He wants you to pray down his will. And more than that, he wants you to walk in it. But you can't walk in it until you know it and pray it down. Because when you know it, the devil's going to come fight you. He's going to say, no, that don't sound right. You can't take off work for that long. You can't make that relationship work. It's over with. Find out what his will is. Pray it down no matter what happens. And then start walking in it. He's giving you everything good for doing his will. And sometimes it's going to be a struggle and sometimes it's going to be painful. But somewhere deep inside in the chaos, there's going to be peace. Chaotic peace. And you're going to know that you know that you know that you're doing exactly what God's called you to do. Listen, there's a lot of wisdom in walking 
in the will of God. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it don't look right. I want to I want to tell a quick story and read a letter to you. Um, most of you know um, about my father's ministry, uh, praying effective for the lost ministries. We've got three books out. He's got three books out. This has got almost two million in print and over forty languages, I believe. Uh, it's incredible. We used to get stories that people would say, look, I got the book. I don't know where it came from. It showed up on my coffee table. I went in my bedroom. It was in my bedroom. Like the book is just moving around. That's spooky, I know, but people are telling that story. And it's not been always just like, I know you may see videos of dad preaching or, you know, he's traveling to West Virginia. He's traveling to California. He drove to New York City one time. Drove. New York City. Yeah. <laughs> it's a picante commercial if you don't know that's old school drove through downtown New York because that's the way his app told him to go I'm talking about downtown way downtown where the lights are pretty sir oh I forgot about that so nobody wants to see a Louisiana license plate (laughs) driving through downtown New York at five o'clock I'm telling you I was worried for him, man. Good thing he was driving down the middle of the will of God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so you see all these things traveling. And listen, you've been to, I don't even know, 30-something states, maybe more. He's traveled all over, preaching all kinds of churches, preached a big organ, preached in, in, they were invited every Southern Baptist pastor from the state of Louisiana to a meeting and had that speak to him. I mean, it just some incredible, incredible stuff. And let me just tell you, that's the mountains, but there's been some valleys. There's been some valleys. There's been some moments where you cut payroll checks and you couldn't cash them. And I'm talking about months. I'm not talking about one or two checks. I'm talking about months. There's been some struggles. There's been some letters that you didn't want to finish reading because they just outright hate everything that you're doing because they're so far on the other side trying to make a point instead of trying to make a difference. You know what we do with that? Put that sucker in the shredder. Don't even read it. I'm just telling you, it ain't always as glamorous as it looks. And we got this letter the other day, and this uh, was written on May the 8th and mailed to us. And I've just shared this with a couple of you guys, but I want to read the letter. I'm, I'm just, it's very powerful. I want you to listen to this. My name, dear Mr. Thomas, my name is Ricky Zaraki. I just want to write you to say thank you, all caps. Almost nine years ago, I received a copy of your book, Praying Effect for the Lost. I didn't order it, and no one I talked to ordered it for me. Here you see again, just shows up. I just wanted to, uh, it just showed up in my mailbox one day. Since prayer is something I enjoy, I was happy to read it, and when I finished it, I found my way to your website for prayer requests. I prayed over a number of people for days before coming across a prayer request from a young pastor in Kenya. He asked for people to pray and, that he would receive some Bibles in their native tongue, Swahili. I prayed for the Bibles and was moving on the next prayer request when the Holy Spirit stopped me, the will of God stopped me, and said to me, don't just pray for those Bibles, you provide them. I contacted your people, she called the office, who contacted the pastor in Kenya. Now, this was nine years ago, mind you. This was not just recent. This was nine years ago. This is before the church ever existed, this church. I contacted your people who contacted the pastor in Kenya and gave permission for me to contact him, and I did. After some fumbling around and trying to find Swahili Bibles to send to him, we established that it was easier and cheaper for us just to send the money, and he would, find, he would take care of it. That was the beginning of our friendship that eventually led to adopting each other, so they kind of adopted one another. Over the years, we worked together, and I have additional help from my church, and we have been able to install well a well on his compound, put a roof on their church, and other practical adventures. I witnessed through photographs of various mission trips he's gone on to plant new churches. To date, he's planted, I believe, 16 churches in Kenya, Nigeria, Sudan, and Uganda. He named his older daughter after me. A few years back, we planted a grove of fruit trees, and now they're starting to be big enough to produce fruit over there. We've laughed together, cried together, and prayed together. Our biggest prayer is that one day we can afford to bring him to the U.S. so that he can, we can meet face-to-face. There have been uh, so many other things that I've been able to do through the years. God has blessed us with the very limited funds over the years, but those funds have been used to do so much, and we are grateful to him. But we are also grateful to you. If you hadn't written that book, I would not have read it. If I hadn't read it, I wouldn't have found my, site, my, my way to your prayer site. If I hadn't found my way to your prayer site, I would not have found Davis. If I hadn't found Davis, they would still be drinking water from the river near their compound. Less churches would have been planted in the region. Orphans in this village would not have had funds for school or food during leaner times. So much has happened in 
Funula, Kenya, thanks to you. I bet you never thought how much those little booklets would do when you wrote them, huh? I just want to share, and I know that Davis joins me in thanking you and praying for God to continue your efforts as well. There's going to be seasons that are going to look like God ain't there. There's going to be seasons where you go, God, I'm doing what you call me to do, and I don't know what's happening. And then you get a letter for something that started nine years ago we had no idea about. Wells are getting planted. Churches are getting planted. You know why? Because somebody stepped up and did the will of God. My dad stepped out of a church where he, was, he, had a, he had a salary, he had benefits, he had everything he needed. He stepped out with nothing. No, but one person said, I'll give you $100 a month. That's all the guarantee they had. He stepped out and did God's will in 2003, 2004. Danny, you were part, you remember that. You were, you were at Westwood. You would call me and say, man, people are still calling the office. We had the church number on the book, and people were still calling the church trying to get books. Listen, it takes wisdom. It takes, it takes, it takes courage to walk in the will of God, even when nobody else. Everybody says you're crazy. It takes some courage. I'm going to give you a quote this morning from Leonard Ravenhill. He said this, smart men walk on the moon. Dairy men walked on the ocean floor, but wise men walk with God. Let me start walking in the will of God. Find out what it is. Pray it down and start walking in it. I'm telling you, you will affect every single person around you in ways you can not even fathom or imagine. And you might get a letter nine years later. When you thought nothing was happening, nine years later, somebody might send you a letter and say, we planted 16 churches because of your faithfulness. How many souls are in heaven today because of the little yellow book? We don't know. We're praying multiply millions. We won't ever know. But you know what? We've got to just stay busy about his business. Just step in on his will. He'll do the rest. I tell people, it's his will, it's his bill. It might not look like it, it might not feel like it, but he's going to take care of it. Let's find out what it is and step into it. It'll change the way you lead your family. It'll change the way you work. It'll change the way you go to school. It'll change everything about you because all of a sudden you start seeing things a little different. Let's do that and watch the world change.